Hello, in episode 6 of History of India, we are going to see Iron Age today. So, under History of India, we are dealing with uh, Ancient and Medieval India. And so far, we have completed till South India. Now, we are entering into Iron Age, specially uh, focusing on the South Indian Iron Age. Because Iron Age is much felt over in South India, more than in North India. So, this is an important part in UPSC syllabus. So, uh, from Iron Age, we will go with uh, these things. So, the first para reads, the Iron Age is in peninsular India, that is the South India, having uh, what is a peninsula and everything we have discussed in the previous video. So, the Iron Age in peninsular India, as in the north, is now known to have begun as early as 1000 BC. So, 1000 BC has to be remembered because that was when Iron Age began. So, Neolithic period, uh, that is when metals came into existence, so that Neolithic period or Chalcolithic period, they were varying till 1000 BC, like they have started around 7600 BC to 3300 BC. So that was when Neolithic age ended. So Iron Age has begun after that in 1000 BC and it extended into AD also. So this is somewhat earlier to what was uh, formally spo spoken about, that was about North India or Harappan Age. We were speaking about North India in our previous video about that. Uh, under that we were speaking about Harappa. So Harappan civilization, uh, in Harappan civilization the Iron Age began much later to 1000 BC. So Iron Age first began in South India and then it extended to North India. So that is what we must know. Most archaeological attention at Iron Age sites has been devoted to burials. So we see the feeling or the felt of iron in burial uh, uh, thing about South India. So the burial places or burial, everything things related to burials were all made with iron. So that uh, that is what we have out of archaeological excavations to speak about iron. So these burials were often associated with megaliths. So megaliths are those uh, monumental things that were made out of stone. We saw some megalithic sites also like uh, in South India or in Deccan we feel we find these megalithic sites more. So megaliths in the form of large stones, in the sense building monuments or burials with large huge stones is megalith. Microliths or small small things with stones. So in Iron Age megaliths were also there. So with large stone slabs there were various things, various uh, burials or various monuments formed. So some examples of such big big uh, megaliths are menhirs, dolmenoid lists or circles of stone. So menhirs are nothing but the full form, the meaning of it is men in the sense stone, hir in the sense long. So by this we know that menhirs are long man-made erected stones. So some huge stone is carved out so into a long making. So this is nothing but menhir. Dolmenoid lists are nothing but big big stones used for burials. So like this some four or five stones will be placed like an altar you can think. So in this, in the place crevice of these stones, in between these stones, there will be a dead body buried. So that is a burial type of thing. They are dolmenoid lists or circles of stones. As the name says, the stones will be arranged in circles or semicircles. So like this, that's a formation of stones. So these things were um, starting to coming up uh, during Iron Age period. So they are all megalith examples. So all of these things, so Iron Age was not just about iron but big big monuments with stones also. Such movements can be seen overlooking the little cultivable valleys of the Nilgiris and Palani hills as well as over the Dakkan where stone abounds. So stone is so much found, it abounds so much in the Dakkan area. So Dakkan area is nothing but it's a inverted triangle area. So this is West India, this is all South India. So this is a big Dakkan plateau. So it will be ranging from around 600 meters on an average. So the, in this peninsular India we have this Dakkan Plateau. So here we have Indian Ocean. So this Dakkan Plateau extension is like this. In this Dakkan Plateau we have a lot of stone material. So out of these stone material we see these megaliths. So we find this especially in Nilgiris, in the cultivable valleys of Nilgiri. Nilgiri mountains are in western Tamil Nadu. So they are a part of western Ghats. So these are Nilgiri mountains and as we are speaking about Nilgiri mountains, the highest peak in Nilgiri mountains is Doda Betta. So that is around uh, 2600 and odd meters high, Doda Betta. So Nilgiri is in Deccan. And Palani hills are also an extension of western Ghats, eastern extension of western Ghats. And Palani hills, we see them in Tamil Nadu and also they extend towards Kerala also. 
so this is also an extension of western guards eastern extension of western guards so overlooking these two so from these two hills that are part of deccan we see these things we see this stone abounding uh, megaliths in deccan area so this is what we find from excavations of iron age stone alignments and sarcophagus burials are found over northern tamil nadu sarcophagus burial is nothing but burying a body with a tomb of stone like we we find these tombs these days in uh, the form of wood so wooden tombs we see today so but in earlier back then in iron age the tombs were made up of stone so these tombs were not just with a small shape but they have some carvings on them carving of a person or carving of some flowers or some decoration will be done over this stone so a huge stone we can say so that is sarcophagus burials they were all found in north in tamil nadu during iron age though it is called an iron age the ma major thing is about all stones big big stones because these stones have to be carved with the help of iron tools so that is about iron age in almost every sizable settlement in the fertile parts of southern tamil nadu pot burials are seen pot burials are called tali burials so in the same tamil nadu in north in tamil nadu we were seeing sarcophagus burials they are stone tombs in southern tamil nadu we are seeing tali burials they are pot burials in a huge pot in a huge clay pot the burial dead body will be placed and will be buried so that is pot burial they have been uncovered in excavations suggesting that this area is well populated so why one has to go with pot burials because they cannot afford a huge burial uh, tomb tombstone because there are, there is no place when the population is high people go with small burials like putting a dead body in a small pot and putting it and burying it so this will suggest that tamil nadu has got well population during back then in iron age in kerala there is a considerable range of distinctive but related monuments such as large umbrella shaped stones so we were seeing these burials from tamil nadu and coming to kerala now we see some large umbrella shaped stone structures and also burial chambers excavated in laterite so kerala has got laterite soil so laterite soil is nothing but reddish clayey soil so that is uh, rich in iron so that is the reason why it is red in color iron and aluminum is present so laterite is nothing but uh, soil like that which is formed out of or weathering away of igneous rocks so that is mostly seen in uh, kerala as these excavations show that burial chambers are excavated from these laterite soils so we have seen what we have seen in tamil nadu we have also read what we are seeing in kerala from iron age these are some excavations so in these megalith burial complexes so we are seeing big big megalith burials there are uh, these stones sarcophagus burials with stone tombs and big big uh, pot burials so everything must be carved out of iron so because of that this iron implements were used so that is why we are reading all of this under iron age so these burials were also placed with lamps etched conch shells and black and red ware so as we have seen people back then were believing in life after death so they were placing these lamps black ware and red ware etched conch shells with the dead uh, when they are buried so conch shell is nothing but a spiral shell it is a kind of mollusk and the marine shell we find like this this is a kind of spiral shell so these conch shells are etched etched in the sense some picture is carved on them so breaking the material so that etched conch shells lamps and black and red ware pottery ware were all placed along with the dead it is notable that there is a fair degree of uniformity in iron age burial goods throughout the south so throughout the south whether it be tamil nadu kerala or uh, the upper parts of the deccan like maharashtra everywhere we see that the iron age was all having same kind of uniformity in burial goods the full impact of the megalithic iron using culture in the south was felt from about the middle of the millennium so we have known that the millennium is or the 1000 bc is the time when iron age has started but the full impact of the iron age throughout the south or uh, in the form of megalithic burial grounds or usage of iron it is the full full impact of usage of iron has been felt from the about the middle of the millennium that is around about 1500 bc the full impact has come up all throughout the south in un in uniformity from 1500 bc megaliths were apparently built into the sangam period so sangam period is a period that was uh, the main centrality of the period was concentrated around madurai that is around tamil nadu 
so in sangam period that is from 6th century bc sangam period lasted from this period 6th century bc to 3rd century ce so bc to ad 3rd century ad so this is the period when sangam sangam was ex existing it is nothing but the period when there were many scholars and poets formed into groups so that is called a sangam so megaliths were seen during this period sangam period is a period during iron age that we must remember and as it is a period during iron age even sangam period excavations showed the presence of megaliths which is a prominent characteristic of iron age the iron age culture diffused through the south with a militaristic people using iron tools and all of south was uh, in the form of various kingdoms so that we know from the history so based on these huge kingdoms in the south people were having their own militaries the kingdoms were having their own militaries and because of this militaristic mindset of people iron tools are needed so we have horses to go for war and these horses will have must have weapons and the soldiers military people must have weapons and all of them are carved out of iron so it is not just about megaliths burials and all but but also some militaristic tools also irrigated rice cultivation and again one more thing is agriculture needs tools so these in iron age we have iron age tools coming up iron tools coming up so irrigated rice cultivation and the corresponding material culture spread throughout the peninsula during iron age we know that irrigation and also agriculture was very much in usage by then so this cultivation needed iron and iron age one of its characteristics is irrigated rice cultivation also next the population density reached a new plane so during iron age one important point is the population density grew we have seen in tamil nadu in tamil nadu in southern tamil nadu there were pot burials called tali burials in which a pot a clay pot is made and a person is buried with the clay pot into the ground so this happened because of high population in tamil nadu so this is this suggests that by iron age population grew a lot in south india it was only in this cultural phase that the major dravidian languages each covering so wide an area became established so in the same age there were these languages forming dravidian languages or south indian languages so famous dravidian languages like telugu tamil all of them are were coming up during 1000 bc or in iron age so we know about their coming up but we do not know what has happened earlier to dravidian languages coming up so dravidian language is a kind of mixed languages that evolved over a period of time but by 1000 bc or by iron age there were established dravidian languages that were in play in different parts in south india so each language was uh, having a huge wide area so a wide area of people were speaking one language and next wide area of people were speaking one dravidian language so that's how languages got divided or segregated they are all called dravidian languages so all of this happened during iron age the assumption that the major dravidian languages spread over south by about 500 bc it does not speak about the earlier existence of dravidian languages so dravidian languages were coming from 500 bc so by 1000 bc we have iron age and the full impact of it is felt from 1500 bc and from 500 bc we have got the iron age like from 500 bc we have got the full uh, dravidian languages coming up out of iron age so this does not uh, preclude the existence of earlier dravidian languages because there is no uh, no strong culture during then and people were speaking various various languages probably tribal languages maybe but then dravidian languages uh, the established form of the present languages have come up it is possible that while people in sin and gujarat might have spoken dravidian languages so not just tamil nadu kerala and andhra pradesh but even in sin and gujarat there were indigenous indians so they were also speaking dravidian languages at this at that time but when these people were speaking dravidian languages in sindh and gujarat at that time south indian people were not having this established languages but by 500 bc even south indian people were going on speaking these dravidian languages established indian languages so at this time in india at this iron age time the dravidian entity in south india it is a amalgam or a, or a combination or a mix of divergent people and cultures and not a civilization in north india we were seeing harappan civilization indus valley civilization but in south india there is no civilization like that but there were divergent people people were in groups and they were divergent not having any relation with each other with one another so there are these divergent people and all of them 
they uh, became uh, so so different that even different different languages started coming up amongst them and a mix of these tribal people all their languages got mixed and dravidian languages so far emerged uh, by them by iron age so this is about some something that iron age has got as a major characteristic that is the increase in population and also the emergence of dravidian languages from 500 bc that is uh, from half um, uh, uh, half of the millennium from around half of the 1000 bc millennium so this is about uh, the languages emergence and this is about iron age we have seen especially from peninsular india and the full impact of iron age though it has started in 1000 bc it has come after it is it was felt only about the middle of the millennium that is around 500 bc 500 bc not 1500 bc so though it has started from 1000 bc the full impact of megalithic iron age started from 500 bc that is the middle of the millennium middle of 1000 bc so some important characteristics included during iron age were usage of tools by military people rice cultivation and use of iron things for that and population density grew and languages emerged they are dravidian languages in the south so this is about iron age particularly focusing on south india during iron age period in 1000 bc and thank you